Nora let out a shriek when Wyatt's bright orange car hurtled into the side of Nora's hot pink one. His car hit hers so hard that the impact literally rattled her teeth. Her head jerked far enough to the left that her earring gouged her neck. Hey, she protested. Wyatt didn't hear her. Not only was the hum of all the bumper cars loud, but the rock music blasting from the arena speakers was even louder. Her voice was lost in the racket. Wyatt grinned at her. She gave him her best fuming, dirty look, which didn't bother him at all. He winked and turned his car to go after someone else. Nora clenched her steering wheel and stomped on her accelerator, heading after Wyatt. She needed some payback. Whizzing past a couple of her friends, Nora kept Wyatt in her sights as she aimed toward the arena's short outside wall. She intended to skirt past the melee, the melee in the middle and sneak up on Wyatt. As she scooted along the wall, Nora glanced over the top of the wall. Beyond it, she could see a labyrinth of dark plastic pipes that extended into darkness in the distance. Something about the tangled plastic gave Nora the heebie-jeebies. She wondered what was back there. A scream pulled her attention to the arena. Out in front of her, Wyatt and his friends were ganging up on some small kids who were having trouble controlling their cars. Nora forgot all about the pipes as she stomped on her accelerator. She focused on Wyatt and aimed right at him. Well, that's a bit of a weird inclusion in the story. What What's that going to do with everything? <laughs> I actually don't know. I, I don't know what has to do with anything. Anyway, Aiden lost track of the number of pipes he and Jace wound through before they finally found a big junction that gave them a reasonable line of sight down every approaching tube. The multiple openings would provide several escape routes and would allow the boys to hear better. The more open the maze was, the less the pipes muted sound. Uh, Aiden shifted into a sitting position. Jace did the same. Aiden pointed at the various openings in turn. That one is a ladder down. I don't think it's going to be a good option. Haps could just fling himself down after us. He pointed us. He pointed to the next two openings. Those are level, so we could go that way, but Haps could probably come after us pretty easily. He pointed at the last opening. I think going up that climbing pipe will be best. We already know Haps can't do ladders, and I don't see how he could do climbing pipes without his foam hands. Jace looked at the climbing pipe opening. But what's up there? How do we know it won't be another blocked off arena? Or area? Aiden crawled to the opening and looked up the ladder. He exhaled loudly. It looks clear. He returned to his sitting position. He rubbed his knees. The boys didn't speak for several minutes. Finally, Jace broke the silence. I feel bad about kicking Haps. I feel bad about a lot of things. Jace stared at his feet. Then he looked up at Aiden. Do you think robots are vindica vindica vindictive? Vindictive, yeah. Vindictive. Ah, vindictive. There we go. Do you think robots are vindictive? Aiden made a face. What? You think Haps is trying to get back at us for kicking him? You think he turned his arms into weapons so he can exact bloody revenge? Aiden gave Jason, are you kidding me look? Haps is high tech, but he's a robot. Robots don't feel, therefore they can't be vindictive. Jace's mouth drooped. Yeah, of course you're right, being dumb. Aiden punched, J uh, punched Jace's arm. You're never dumb. You're the smartest person I know. And you know, like, what? Five people? Aiden laughed. Good point. He sobered and poked Jace. But I mean it. You're smart. Not smart enough to get us out of here. Aiden shook his head. We'll figure something out. Although he tried to put the confidence into words when he spoke them, as soon as they were out of his mouth, Aiden could hear the lie. He realised that he didn't believe what a screeching scrape cut into Aiden's thoughts. The scrape was followed by a series of clunks and then the distorted robotic voice. Out. With. Me. Jay stiffened. His eyes were huge. Aiden figured his eyes were just as big. His heart had started racing. Out. With. Me. Haps repeated. Sometime since they'd last seen him, Haps had lost more of his verbal functioning. Where lost had been only a gravelly growl, preceded the word out. <clears throat> but out sounded even more alarming than it had before. The command wasn't so much spoken in Haps' now contorted voice as it was barked like it was being shouted by an irate direct, uh, dictator, one with the means to execute his subjects. 
Aiden managed to get his legs working. Kneeling, he scrambled to the pipe, the climbing pipe opening. When Jace didn't move, when he continued to stare in the direction of Haps' approach, Aiden nudged him with the toe of his boot. Come on! Jace blinked and got on his knees. He crawled into the climbing pipe behind Aiden. Aiden reached for the first handhold. As fast as he could, he pulled himself up and found a foothold. Then he reached for the next handhold, and the next, and the next. He crawled up the wall like a spider fleeing a ravenous bird. He didn't want to. T uh, he didn't turn to look, but it sounded like Jace was right behind him. As they'd hoped, the climbing tube ended up at an open fork leading to two level pipes. As Aiden stopped to evaluate his choices, his shoulders tightened. Haps's insistent warped reflection seemed to bounce back and forth up the climbing pipe behind them. Aiden risked a look at Haps, um, as Haps repeated his insistent out with me. The words echoed through the climbing pipe and seemed to radiate outwards into other, other tubes. As soon as Aiden checked on Haps, he was sorry he had. Although Haps hadn't been able to manage the ladder pipe, he was having better luck with the climbing pipe. His knife-like hands were slashing at the pipe's walls, but his mutilated tread still had enough functionality to find purchase on the hand and footholds. Haps's progress was thankfully slow, but it was still progress. He was climbing the he was scaling the climbing tube. Come on! Aiden led Jace into the left pipe. They scurried along the pipe as fast as they could, but when they rounded its first bend, they realised they'd chosen the wrong pipe. It was blocked with a two-way mirror security barrier. Turn around! Aiden shouted to Jace as soon as he saw the barrier. Turn around! Jace turned around, but he was panting in terror. Aiden understood why. Had Haps made it to the top of the climbing pipe? If he had, they'd be crawling right into the sharp metal shards that used to be Haps' hands. But what choice did they have? Faster! Aiden urged Jace. He was nearly shoving Jace down the pipe. Aiden's long legs gave him more speed than Jace's short ones, and Jace was slowly slowing, clearly reluctant to face what might be waiting at the end of the pipe. Aiden shoved Jace out of the way and squeezed past him. He figured he had a better chance of facing off against Haps than Jace did. Seconds after Aiden took the lead, they reached the junction again. At the same exact moment, the spear-like tip of Haps' left arm scored a gash in the junction's floor. The ripping sound made Haps' whirring and clanking even more hideous. Aiden felt like they were in the bowels of churning machinery designed to disassemble and pulverise whatever was put into it. As Haps' now serrated extender arm flailed toward Aiden, he flattered himself on the bottom of the pipe. His gaze darted around. Behind Haps, a security mirror was sliding over the top of the, uh, of the climbing pipe. That way was no longer an option. They couldn't go back the way they'd just come because it went nowhere, and Haps was blocking the only other pipe entrance. Aiden looked up at Haps' gleaming metal arms. He froze when the arms started reaching for him. Suddenly, Jace let out a banshee yell. Lunging over the top of Aiden, Jace dove under Haps' outstretched arms. His Swiss army knife in his fist, Jace jammed the blade into the open doorway in Haps' torso. Jace's attack on Haps galvanised Aiden. He knew Jace's little knife wasn't going to do much damage to Haps' circuits, but he remembered that the little robot didn't weigh that much. Maybe they could drive him back, if they could avoid getting slashed. Jace pulled his knife back and barely avoided getting stabbed when Haps jerked toward him. Aiden quickly flipped to his side and spun. He scissor-kicked Haps, shoving the robot against the junction's wall. Realising what Aiden was trying to do, Jace lay flat and added his kicks to the attack. Between the two of them, they managed to shove Haps into the dead-end pipe, and they were able to knock him over. When Haps landed on his side, Aiden got to his knees. Maybe we can finish him off, Aiden thought. They should attack instead of fleeing. If they could get the plastic shell off his head, they might be able to rip out his circuitry. He fleetingly asked himself why he mastered juggling, hula hooping, jump roping and yo-yoing. What good did those talents do him now? It wasn't like he could pull a juggling pin out of his back pocket and whack Haps in the face with it. Jace must have had the same attack idea that Aiden had. He, too, shifted to his knees. His mouth was set and his jaw bunched. He was ready for battle. Together, the two boys advanced on the thrashing robot. They didn't get far. Haps might have been on his side, but his arms hadn't stopped moving. He waved them continuously, which effectively turned him into a robotic propeller. Shining, sharp metal slides through the air in turbulent sweeps that were impossible to completely avoid. One of Haps' swipes caught Aiden on the cheek. 
Hot pain seared his cheek, his skin, and warm blood ran down his jaw. He jerked his head back. Go, Aiden! Jay shouted. He pointed at the other pipe opening. We need to get away while we can! As Jay spoke, Hap suddenly whirled, whirred loudly and flipped up onto his treads. Go! Jay urged again. Aiden didn't argue. He turned around and crawled pell-mell into the other available pipe opening. Checking over his shoulder, Aiden saw that Jace was right behind him, and Haps was right behind Jace. The robot had wasted no time reorienting himself. Out with me, he chanted as he rolled erratically after them. The pipe was unfortunately a level pipe. Although Aiden and Jace were racing through it as fast as they could, Haps was having no trouble keeping up. The sounds of his humming motor and crunching treads chased the boys down the pipe. Aiden's mouth went dry at the thought of how close Taps' jagged metal limbs must have been getting to Jace's feet. The image of that metal piercing Jace's sneakers or his skin gave Aiden the strength to crawl even faster. The pipe took a sharp left turn, and then it switched back immediately to the right. After the abrupt right, it jogged left again. At the end of the left jog, the pipe opened to a platform. It was the top of a slide! Aiden lunged onto the platform. At the same time, he reached back and grabbed Jace by the shirt. He yanked Jace into his arms, just as Haps lurched toward him, his deadly blade-like appendages sweeping the air only a few inches away from them. Hold on to me, Aiden shouted. He pushed off the platform with every bit of strength he had. The slide they found was a good one. It had a couple turns, but mostly it was steep and straight. In just a matter of seconds, it shot them into a ball pit similar to the one they landed in just a couple hours earlier. Aiden could only hope the few seconds it had taken to get to the pit had been enough. He had a sinking feeling it hadn't been, but he didn't have time to think about his dread. As soon as they hit the plastic orbs, both Aiden and Jace started beating the balls aside, lunging their way through the colourful spherical sea. Aiden had his eye on a pipe opening at the other side of the pit. Unfortunately though, they didn't reach it before Haps reached them. As Aiden's foreboding had predicted, Haps had come down the slide just as fast, probably even faster, than Aiden and Jace had. And when he'd come off the slide, maybe because he was more compact, Haps had been launched further out into the pit than the boys had been. Haps also had no trouble ploughing his way through the plastic balls. His mass shoved the balls aside like they were nothing. This is why Haps got to them before Aiden and Jace could get out of the ball pit. And because Aiden was in the lead, Haps got to Jace first. Out with me! Haps crackled as he reached out to grab his quarry. Jace must have sensed that Haps was right behind him because he immediately dove into the ball pit as if it was a lake and he could skim under its surface to get away. It would have been a decent plan probably if his feet hadn't popped up when he dove down. Haps' limbs were extended in the efforts to grab Jace when Jace's feet rose up out of the ball pit. Haps immediately tried to clutch the feet. But of course, his hands couldn't clutch. They could only slice. The razor-like spikes at the ends of Haps' arms cut right through one of the Jace's ankles, hacking off Jace's right foot roughly and crudely, and with so much force that the robot was torn uh, that the robot the foot was torn free of Jace's ankle and spit aside as if by a chainsaw. The second the foot landed among the plastic balls with a plop, Jace's upper body erupted from the ball pit. Jace's mouth was opened wide in a shriek that was so loud and high pitched, Aiden wouldn't have been surprised if it had been cracked nearby if it had cracked nearby mirrored partitions. Aiden immediately reached for Jace, grabbing at his friend's arm. He wasn't thinking. He had no plan. He was just reacting. The problem was that Haps was doing the same thing, and it was faster than Aiden. When Jace's chest appeared from under the heaving ball pit, Haps grabbed for Jace again. The robot's now bloody knife hands slashed through Jace's shoulder, and Jace's shrieks ratcheted even higher. Aiden managed to hang on to Jace's forearm. Pulling with all his might, Aiden hitched Jace from the pit. As soon as Jace was out of the pit, Aiden hooked his arms under Jace's armpits. Then he levered himself into the nearby pipe. He didn't know if it was too late to save his friend, but he had to try. In just a few seconds since Jace's foot was amputated, he must have lost a lot, uh, lost a massive amount of blood. Aiden had to get Jace away from Haps, or it was going to be too late. Out with me, Haps persisted. <laughs> he gets more and more cursed. Um, Aiden yanked Jace further into the pipe. 
Jace continued to scream in pain. His eyes were bulging impossibly wide, and his mouth was stretched, was stretched into a grimace. Hang on, Jace! Aiden shouted. He threw himself backward along the pipe, hauling Jace with him. But again, he wasn't fast enough. Haps moved too quickly, and as he moved, he kept trying to get a hold of Jace. The shrill sound of metal on metal filled Aiden's ears as Haps brought both limbs together around Jace's lower body. Aiden was sure Haps was trying to pick up Jace, but of course his torn metal couldn't do that. All it could do was slice and shred. Aiden couldn't see what Haps was doing to Jace, but he could hear his bawling, eye, his bawling cries, and he could see Jace's face. It was so misshapen by pain that it was almost unrecognisable. Aiden tried to hold his friend's gaze, willing him to stay alive. Behind Jace, the robot reached out again. With me, Haps repeated. Aiden pushed off the floor of the pipe with all his strength. Clutching his friend, he heaved himself backward, trying to snatch Jace out of Haps' range. But he couldn't do it. Haps thrashed forward, and Jace howled. As he did, blood poured from his mouth. Oh god, that's so creepy. Jace's eyes blinked once. Aiden felt Jace's body stiffen in the arms. Then he felt Jace go limp. Jace's eyes started... Uh, Jace's eyes start... Uh, so let me start again. Jace's eyes stared at nothing. Aiden, frozen in disbelief and shock, held on to Jace's body. He locked his gaze on Haps. Out with me, Haps said. Aiden had no choice. He let go of Jace and crawled like a demon down the pipe. The next several seconds were nothing more than a confusion of sound and sensation for Aiden. He couldn't make sense of anything he was experiencing. He was vaguely aware that he was crawling for his life. But that thought was just a dim perception that was outweighed by all the other information assaulting his overloaded brain. As if cascading down on him all at once, he felt tears spilling down his cheeks, bile filling his throat, snot dripping from his nose, sweat trickling down his back, blood pounding down his veins, and pain flashing in his knees. That is such a good line right there. That is so well written. Woven through all of that, Overwhelming grief made him want to howl like an enraged wolf. Underneath these primitive reactions, his mind could only offer one repeated thought. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. This can't be happening! Aiden's peripheral senses were working enough for him to be aware when Haps got close. He heard the metallic shredding sounds, and he registered the relentless whirring and the endless chant of OUT WITH ME! Putting on as much speed as he could, Aiden shot through the pipe and found himself in another junction. Three of the pipe openings were in the junction were partitioned off. He had just one option. Thankfully, it was a ladder pipe. Just as Haps emerged from the pipe behind Aiden, Aiden scrambled up the ladder rungs. Haps was so close that Aiden felt Haps' sharp metal edges graze the leather on the sole of Aiden's left boot. He quickly whipped his leg up, whimpering as he did. He couldn't contain the whimper. The image of Jace's con disconnected foot filled Aiden with total mind-numbing hysteria. Aiden was devastated by the death of his friend, of course, but the idea of getting dismembered, for some reason, was 100 times more horrifying than simply dying. He didn't want to go out the way Jace had. No way. The ladder pipe was a short one. Aiden didn't think it took him up a full level, maybe a half level. The ladder pipe came to an end at a fork between two pipes. Aiden, however, one of the uh, sorry, again, however, one of the paths was blocked. Once more, Aiden had just one choice. Glancing down to be sure Haps was stopped at the bottom of the ladder, Aiden started to duck into the open pipe. He hesitated when he saw that Haps was looking up at him. Haps had his round white head tipped back, and his one functioning eye was gazing at Aiden intensely. The intent, Aiden thought, looked decisively evil. Uh, decidedly evil. But of course, that was crazy. As he told Jace, Haps wasn't capable of evil. He was just a robot with a job to do, and he was doing his job the best he could. He didn't care that the results of his efforts were carving up innocent kids. Did he? Aiden shook his head, but he couldn't tear his gaze from Haps. As Aiden watched, Haps tipped his head back into its usual position and powered backward away from the ladder. Haps turned and slipped back into the ball pit. His butchered treads belching plastic balls up around him. Haps mowed right over the top of Chase's limp, lacerated body and disappeared from Aiden's view. He's going to find a way to get to me, Aiden said, 
As soon as he spoke, Aiden realised no one was there to hear him. Jace was gone. Didn't Aiden get that? He just watched the murdering robot run over the top of his dead friend. Aiden was alone. He was talking to himself. Aiden had no idea where he was going as he crawled through the pipe. He and Jace had looked for a way out and hadn't found one. What could Aiden do? He didn't know, but he knew he wasn't going to sit still and wait for Haps to come and shred him. He put his head down and crawled. Aiden wasn't sure how long he had crawled before he reached a fork. That was no longer a fork. One of the pipe openings in front of Aiden was blocked. The other was a gradual slide that curved out of sight. Aiden looked back over at his shoulder. Should he retrace his steps and make his way back into the pit? Uh, if Haps was looking for him, Haps was no longer in the pit. And maybe the robot wouldn't have the reasoning capacity to return to the place Aiden had fled. There was only one problem with that idea. Aiden didn't want to return to the bull pit. Jace was in the bull pit, and Jace's blood was in the bull pit. No, Aiden couldn't face going back into the bull pit. That left him with just one choice. He eased himself feet first into the gradual slide. Because he didn't know where Haps was, for all Aiden knew, the robot might have been waiting at the bottom of the slide. Aiden was in no hurry to get to the bottom of the pipe. So, he let himself slip slowly downward, trying to ignore the way his imagination conjured up an image of Haps waiting at the bottom. The pipe Aiden was in, like so many others in the section of the maze, was walled by the two-way mirror. Aiden could see through it easily, but he knew no one could see him. The slide passed by the back of the laser tag arena, and Aiden watched a couple boys creep around a fake boulder and ambush a couple girls. With their goggles on, the teens weren't easily recognisable, but Aiden was pretty sure they were in his science class. They weren't friends, but he knew them. If only he'd managed to make more friends. Maybe if he and Jace hadn't been their own universe, guys like Landon wouldn't have picked on them. And if guys like Landon had left them alone, Aiden wouldn't have got a back, uh, gotten a black eye. If he hadn't gotten a black eye, maybe he wouldn't have wanted to escape into the maze. Maybe his whole life would have been different. Maybe Jace would, would have still had a life. Aiden reached the bottom of the gradual slide and he immediately cursed his vivid imagination. It had turned Aiden's fears into reality. Haps was coming along the pipe toward the bull pit at the bottom of the slide. He was just 20 feet from the pit. Swallowing a scream of terror, Aiden scrambled through the bulls and crawled into the closest pipe. He clambered as fast as he could through the pipe, trying to put as much distance as he could between himself and the pursuing robot. Haps's churring sounds echoed behind Aiden. Its chant reverberated through Aiden's chest. Out with me, Haps insisted. Aiden took a left turn and found himself in a climbing pipe. Nearly leaping up its sides, he grabbed for a handhold, and he pulled himself upward. Below him, Haps clattered closer. Risking a downward glance, Aiden nearly lost his grip on the pipe when he saw Haps' one working eye look up at him. Haps began to ascend the pipe like a demented spider. Aiden climbed faster. At the top of the climbing wall, uh, Aiden faced the junction of three pipes. He didn't stop to think about which way to go. He just crawled down the closest pipe, the one to the right. The scraping sounds behind Aiden told him that Haps wasn't far behind. Aiden's knees were screeching, screaming at him as he pounded through the pipe. It was getting harder and harder to move quickly. It felt like the skin over his kneecaps was raw. He was having trouble breathing too, concentrating on fleeing Haps. Aiden hadn't noticed until now that the tears that had been cascading down his cheeks since Jace had died. Now his nose was plugged from all the crying. He was gasping for air through his mouth. He could hear himself mewling and panting. And worse, he could hear Haps. The robot continued to chant, Out with me! The chant was way too close. But the chant wasn't the worst of the sounds trailing after Aiden. The truly appalling sounds were the nails on a blackboard rasps of Haps' jagged metal edges gr gouging the sides of the pipe behind Aiden. He could all too clearly imagine what he'd feel if Haps, is, if Haps reached him. Almost near the end of the pipe he was in, Aiden spotted a sloping pipe. Oh my god, get to the end of the story already. Uh, although he was tempted to use it, he was pretty sure Haps could easily catch up to him on a slide. Uh, I think this is a good story, don't worry. But, um, like, it is a little bit slow. Uh, so he kept going, and he discovered this pipe ended up looping back around to the one he'd just been in, almost. Just before Aiden reached the juncture of the two pipes, he realised that the pipe he'd been in, he'd just been in, was now closed off. Obviously, Haps had damaged it enough to activate another safety barrier. Aiden glanced over his shoulder and yelped. 
Haps was only about 15 feet away. Out with me, Haps said. The blood-stained metal of his killing arms reached for Aiden. Aiden had no choice now. He was nearly cornered. He quickly backtracked a couple feet and dove headfirst down the sliding pipe. The second Aiden landed in the ball pit at the base of the slide, he didn't make the same mistake Jace had made. Aiden didn't try to swim through the pit. Instead, he immediately found his footing and turned to face the slide he'd just come down. He made the turn barely in time. Haps came catapulting off the end of the slide the second Aiden faced it. Because Aiden could see ha Haps' trajectory though, he was able to fling himself out of the robot's path. When Haps hit the ball pit, he landed on his head. Aiden knew the robot would right himself quickly, but it would take a few seconds. Aiden used every one of those seconds to his advantage. Coiling into a tight spring, Aiden launched himself across the ball pit, reaching for the end of the nearest open pipe. He was in the pipe and crawling for all he was worth, before he heard Haps' whirring treads thump into the pipe behind him. Aiden was no longer aware of his body, he realised. He couldn't feel his knees anymore, he couldn't hear his breathing. It was as if his consciousness had transcended his physicality. He was no longer a boy crawling through a maze. He had a single-minded goal, get away from Haps. Aiden crawled around a bend and let himself, for an instant, feel the relief of having Haps out of his sight. But when he looked at the way ahead, he was dismayed to see that more safety barriers had gone up. He was at the junction, but he, had, he only had one choice. Two of the pipes were closed off. Aiden crawled into the one available pipe. As soon as Aiden entered the pipe, he recognised it. He and Jace had been in this pipe twice, and Aiden knew it was a loop with only a couple offshoots. He had to get to one of the offshoots before Haps got too close. Taking a quick glance over his shoulder, Aiden realised that his goal was easier set than accomplished. Haps was the closest he'd ever been. He was less than 10 feet away. Aiden put on the afterburners. He crawled faster than he'd ever crawled in his life. He crawled so fast that by the time he approached the first offshoot, he'd managed to get about 20 feet ahead of the relentless robot. He charged toward the offshoot with the first hope that he'd felt since Jace had died. If Aiden remembered right, this offshoot led to a ladder. Haps couldn't manage ladders. If Aiden could reach the ladder, he could... Aiden came to an abrupt stop. He reached the first offshoot, and it was closed off. A safety partition barred the way. No, Aiden whispered. Out with me, Haps said. He was once again way too close. Aiden started crawling once more. The other offshoot was just around the curve up ahead. It didn't lead to a ladder, but it did lead to a long tunnel that had a lot of intersecting pipes. Reaching that offshoot would at least give Aiden some options. If Haps had been a living, breathing creature, Aiden was sure he'd have been able to feel Haps' breath behind him. As it was, Aiden kept expecting to feel Haps' jagged metal appendages slide into his foot at any moment. For some reason, Aiden was back in his body again. The muscles in his legs were knotted, and his feet felt weird as if they were curling up in dread of Haps' savage limbs. Aiden tried to ignore everything he felt. He knew that if he thought about what would happen if Haps reached him, he wouldn't have the strength to keep crawling, and he had to reach the other offshoot. Just as his body sensations had returned, Aiden's auditory systems came back online too. He could once again hear his breath. He could also hear the rhythmic thudding of his knees against the, plastic, uh, the pipe's plastic. And of course, he could hear... Haps' clicks and whirs and grinds and the resolute chant getting closer and closer. Just a few more seconds, Aiden thought. The offshoot was right round the corner. But it wasn't. When Aiden sped toward where he expected the offshoot to be, his heart plummeted into his gut. The offshoot wasn't open anymore. Like the other one, it was now covered by a safety barrier. <laughs> Aiden was strapped and Haps was getting closer. Out with me, Haps ordered him. The robot's crackly voice was way too loud, which meant it was way too close. Aiden didn't look back to see just how close Haps was. He didn't want to know. Given no other choice, Aiden tore past the blocked offshoot. It was instinct to keep going, but Aiden knew his flight from Haps was futile now. With the offshoots blocked, Aiden was now caught in a closed-off loop. All he could do was go around and around in a circle. Haps' calamitous pursuit had been activating security barriers all along. Aiden had been essentially herded like an animal into a killing zone. He had nowhere to go, but still, he kept crawling. As Aiden crawled, he didn't allow himself to think anymore. If he thought, he'd have to ask himself the questions he didn't want to ask. How long could he stay ahead of Haps? How long would it be before Haps' out-of-control passage through the looped pipe would damage it enough to partition it off even more? 
How long would it be before Aiden died the same way Jace had? As Aiden crawled through the pipe, he couldn't help but see the kids beyond the pipe's plastic walls, and he realised he had gotten his wish. He was invisible. Ooh! Ooh! That's a good ending, actually. Well, it's not a good ending. Of course he dies. Well, it's kind of good that he died, because he was an awful character anyway. Okay. My eyes need a second to adjust, because... I've been staring at the screen for a while and reading this pipe goes into this pipe, this go pipe goes into this pipe. Uh, honestly, that is my my one big criticism with this story. It all happens in a pipe maze. So the way that they describe the scenery is this pipe goes into this pipe, this pipe is coloured this colour, this pipe leads to a slide which leads to a ball pit. Like, it's all the same stuff over and over again, which gets a bit boring after a while. I must be honest, like, yeah, the, hap the the story was pretty good, okay, it was good, it wasn't as good as, or as mo mind blowing as some of the other stories, but it was still good, don't get me wrong, uh, and that ending actually gave me chills, uh, I didn't think it would, I knew the last sentence, or I, I knew, like, what the ending was, the fact that he was invisible, but when I just read that just now, it actually did give me the, the chills, so that's good, um, because it's like, we, I wasn't expecting that ending to come up, like, just now. Because, you know, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what other points to make, because there wasn't too much. Haps was, like, Haps was definitely a presence always behind him. And, man, that, Jace's death was very, like, gruesome. It wasn't gruesomely explained. But it was pretty gruesome. He just tore off his shoulders from his uh, his limbs from his sh shoulders, stuff like that. Uh, could have seen like more screaming and stuff like from Jace, I guess. I don't know. I feel like he never had his, like his last words or anything. Anyway, yeah. Wow, that was great. So the final story. Here's a little preview for those of you who don't, don't want to wait for the... For, anyway, uh, the next story is B7. This story is mind-blowing, I'm telling you. It is... It should be called MB because it is mind-blowing, honestly. Uh, yeah, good one, Ozone. Uh, you need to read B7. If you didn't like Haps, that's completely fine. That doesn't mean the quality of the stories has gone down because B7 is freaking fantastic. I have so much passion for B7 and I'm so excited to read it. So that is what's going to be happening next time. Thank you so much for listening to this audiobook read through. I've been Ozone, but thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.